Hey students, welcome to another episode and in this episode we are going to learn what are the prefatory pages and why they are there. What are the basic means of these pages because every project report or thesis or synopsis needs these pages. So our first and foremost motto is to learn why these pages are needed. If we learn the reasons behind them it will be very much easy to format those pages. So as we can see here, we have almost seven different categorized initial pages. These pages don't have page numbers on them. That's why they are called as uh, initial or prefatory pages, which gives you the glimpse of your report, means the authenticity, who approved it, why it was there, who created it, when it was created, what was the perception or the agenda of a creator and who supported or while doing the research or project, which conditions were there. So all these parameters should be discussed in the prefatory pages and that's why it is more important. We will dig in each page one by one and you will get the reasons. Once you get the reasons, you will definitely get the clarity. Then you will be giving full justice to these pages. So let's start with the title page. So what is title page? Basic theme behind title page is that one who is browsing almost 50 or 100 or uh, multiple documents at the same time he should get the clear, he or she should get the clear glimpse that what is your project is all about. So the title page needs to give a proper heading of your title, project title. And then who approved it, who made the research is also mentioned on it. So uh, this is a quite cleaner profile page which will give uh, a glimpse of the basic idea. So what we need over here is the project title. Then we need where it is submitted, submitted to which institute or university or any specific department, all these things in submitted to. Then we have a third most important parameter. If you are creating or generating any report, it was due to some basic mandates of academics or professional etiquettes. So what was that? So in partial fulfillment of why it is called partial that you need to also present these reports, not mere submitting this report will ensure your full credibility. So you need to present it as well in the format of presentation or viva basically. So that's why it is called as partial fulfillment. And once you are giving the viva, that will be completing the full agenda. So you will get the full marks. So that, that's why it is mentioning partial fulfillment over here. Then we need to mention submitted by, which is the student or scholar name over here. And this will give the brief idea about the department, roll number, or you can say the discipline where, or the course where the student is studying, everything about who is the researcher or who is the scholar who was there presenting this report. Then the another parameter is under the guidance of and this is quite important parameter and you need to mention the guides name over here basically the institute level guide name over here and then we need to mention the name of university or department or institute with the logo over here. So. Uh, depends or varies uh, as per the norms or the guidelines given but the logo gives a more emphasis because as you can clearly see uh, from start to end there was only text so to give some attractiveness so by adding the logo of institute or university you will be adding some genuinity over here and then the last but not the list the month and the year of publication Whenever you are about to print this hardbound uh, project report, it should mention the month and year so that everyone who is browsing with all thousands of these reports 
will get a clear glimpse which one is the recent one. By mentioning the project year and month, you definitely ensure that the data given in this project report limits to that date. So it will help the other students or the browser who is looking for the data uh, to get the precise data from those dates. So these were the contents of the title page and everyone should follow this to give a proper glimpse of any browser who is picking up your report. What are the standard rules to prepare the title page? So first and foremost, it is always center aligned. The second important rule is use spaces to present the distinctiveness. You can, you can spare more space between two lines or between two words or anything you can play with to increase the distinctiveness of your project. The third important is using the uppercase to give more emphasis uh, just like to, uh, to the university name or to your project title. It will be giving more uh, catchy look. And the most important thing which we definitely need not to do is to do spelling mistakes. Yes, avoiding spelling mistakes should be precisely done for title page. And uh, the most of the cases we found is about the salutation. Yes, if the guide is PhD holder, so definitely the PhD needs to be mentioned there with the name. If you miss out these things, it will uh, really makes a bad impression or there might be a chances that guide will tell you to reprint and rebound the whole report. So this will cost you so much. So salutation is the main important thing. Then current designation and department of student as well as the guide. And the third important thing is the project and research title. You are not supposed to miss is, an, the or any smaller words in your title which makes a different project title from your own uh, that will definitely uh, make a big hassle and misconceptions about the project. We have also talked about the logo of institute or university. So let's have a quick look how we are expected to show the logo. Logo is the only graphical representation we can show on any title page. So if the logo is circular, a complete circle, this most of the students make the mistakes by arranging the paper adjustment alignment within a page, they try to drag vertically or horizontally to match up the requirements. So this is not at all accepted because there are alphabets in the logo, there are faces or images in the logo that should not be distorted at all. So it is highly recommended to get the high definition photo or PNG format of the logo and then convert it smartly and use only the cross thing which is coming here. So you need to drag and drop diagonally only. So no vertical or horizontal movements for the logo editing or resizing. You will also get the resize function, resize option uh, in the word. So we will definitely have a special video on that. But that uh, title page logo restricts to the normal proportion. So in the next episode, we are going to dig in about the institute level certificate, the company level certificate and uh, who will be and whom to and whom to you acknowledge all these things will be in the next episode so please stay tuned with us and uh, hope you are enjoying these videos there might be chances that these videos will be little bit lengthier than what you expect but uh, believe me once you are getting the concept cleared you need not to worry anymore so thanks for watching. This is Professor Vishwajit Gaike signing off from vishwajit.org.